On July 24, 2023, Apple released iOS 16.6 and macOS 13.5 to the public. These two software updates included patches for multiple security vulnerabilities, one of these being CVE 2023-38600, a bug in WebKit potentially leading to arbitrary code execution. On October of the same year, Zero Day Initiative published a blog post containing a POC for the bug as well as a technical breakdown. And so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at that POC code and understanding how the bug works. WebKit is an open source browser engine used on macOS and iOS in their native Safari browser. So every time you load a web page on your iPhone in Safari, WebKit is powering the rendering of that web page and the JavaScript execution. JavaScript Core is a subcomponent within WebKit that provides the JavaScript execution environment and is responsible for interpreting the JavaScript code that runs on web pages. JavaScript engines in general are highly complex pieces of software. As you can imagine, they have to be capable of executing huge amounts of arbitrary JavaScript code in an efficient and secure manner. And just like all software projects, they are prone to bugs and crashes. The following snippet of JavaScript code is the POC that's capable of triggering this specific WebKit bug. These few short lines of JavaScript are able to trigger a subtle bug within the JavaScript core engine that leads to memory corruption on the heap, which can then be used theoretically to gain arbitrary code execution. So how does this work? We're going to look through this line by line, but feel free to rewatch this part of the video as many times as it takes to understand what's going on here, as it may be hard to wrap this around your head the first watch. We start on the first line by creating a new array buffer object and storing this in the constant AB. We pass the size hex 1000 as the length of the array buffer. According to the JS docs, an array buffer is an object used to represent raw binary data. So in other words, this is kind of like some kind of arbitrary allocation of an arbitrary size, just like a malloc call on the heap essentially. Array buffer objects aren't typically resizable, but in this case we pass a second argument, which is an object containing the key max byte length. And this actually, according to the documentation, makes the array buffer resizable. This will be important later on. Array buffers themselves are just blocks of binary data, but in order to actually be used, we need a second object known as a data view object, which allows us to interpret the binary data behind the array buffer as some specific data format. We can use multiple different objects for this, but in this case, we are using a uint8 array. We create a new uint8 array and pass in the array buffer to the initializer and store this in u8. This U8 array is now allowing us to read and write to the underlying array buffer, which is basically used as the backend data store for this array. Next, we define a new JavaScript function named callback. And this function does two things. First of all, it calls resize with an argument of zero on the array buffer, and then it simply returns zero. Note that the JavaScript function callback has not yet been executed, but rather defined for later use. Finally, we have a call to copy within on the UN8 array. It takes two arguments, first of which we pass in hex 20, second of which we pass an object with the key value of pointing to our callback function that was previously defined. The copy within function copies part of this array to another location in the same array and returns this array without modifying its length. So if we take an example here of an array containing the integers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we call copy within, the first argument is the index that we want to copy items to, and the second argument is where we're going to start from. So essentially in this case, it would move everything from index zero to index starting at one. And then we're left with the following array. In our JavaScript POC, the first argument we use is hex 20, which is a simple integer value. However, the second argument is not an integer value, but rather an object with the key value of point into the previously defined callback function. This means that actually internally to retrieve the value, the callback function must be first invoked and its return value used. As you may have guessed by this point, the ab.resize call that is within the callback function is going to be a key part of this bug. So let's see how this actually plays out in practice. I'm using UTM on macOS here to actually install the older version of macOS so we can run the vulnerable version of JavaScript core within Safari. You can also just download JavaScript core from GitHub and actually check out to the vulnerable commit. Either way will work. So when executing the JavaScript code, everything is fine up until the final line, the call to copy within. Internally, copy within calls into generic typed array view proto func copy within, which is a C++ function within JavaScript core. This function first gets the length of the array buffer, which at this point is hex 1000 and stores it in the variable length. 
and then it gets each of the arguments passed into the function by reading them off of the call frame and using the function argument clamped index from start or end. For the first argument, since this is an integer literal, the value is simply retrieved and returned by calling value dot as in 32. For the second argument, however, the value needs to be retrieved with the call to to integer or infinity, which internally will invoke the value of callback function and execute our callback JavaScript function. Once this is returned, we will have a to value of hex 20 from the integer literal and a from value of zero, but with the added side effect of the array buffer having been resized down to zero. The ability to use a callback function in this way to modify the source array during the copy operation is not in itself a vulnerability. There could be perfectly legitimate reasons for this to occur in real world JavaScript execution. So the WebKit developers are already aware of this and they do attempt to implement a check and fix for this specific scenario. JavaScript core recognizes that the length has changed in this case and it does update it accordingly to reflect the new array length of zero. JavaScript core then also attempts to check that the amount of elements to be copied still fits within the array bounds, since obviously it could have shrunk and the amount that would be copied could exceed this array bounds. The count variable was originally set as the amount of elements being copied, which was calculated by taking the length of the array, initially hex 1000, and subtracting hex 20. We were left with fe0 as the count value. However, after the length of the array has changed, the code now tries to recalculate the new value for count. We take the new length and we subtract from it the greater of the to or from index that we're using in the array. Obviously, in our case, we have a length set to zero and we're subtracting a value from it. This leads to a very obvious integer underflow since there's no check to ensure that we're not subtracting something greater than the length. What happens is we use zero, we subtract hex 20 and we're left with a count value of a very, very large integer lots of f's and an e0 at the end. The JavaScript core code fails to notice this and is actually at this point satisfied to continue on with the memmove call which will carry out the actual memory copy operation. When we reach the memmove call what is actually happening is we're doing a large copy with a size of fffff e0. This obviously causes a huge overflow on the heap and WebKit will crash with a segmentation fault. Having this JavaScript code in a simple HTML file and then opening the page in Safari, we can see that Safari fails to load the page. And then if we look in the crash logs of macOS, we can see that com.apple.webkit.webcontent crashed. The patch for this bug simply implements a check to see if the to or from value is greater than the new length, and then it will abort the copy operation essentially, so that we don't have a subtraction leading to an integer underflow. A bug like this is just the first building block in what could be a full WebKit code execution exploit, but this will need to be paired with a whole bunch of JavaScript magic to create different read and write primitives and eventually run shellcode in the context of the web content process. At that point, it could then even be used to execute a second stage exploit, such as a sandbox escape or a kernel exploit, leading to a full system compromise. But this is out of the scope for today's video. All relevant links will be in the description below if you want to check out this bug yourself and experiment with it on your own devices. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.